Recently, I'm working deeply on the internal circuit of any 555 timer IC. So I thought, why not share my concepts about this IC with you guys. So in this video, we will take a look at different operations of this IC and how we can create delays and timers with it. So without thinking about creating a bomb, let's get started. First thing first, if you are new to my channel and want to learn about electronics then please consider subscribing and also press the bell icon so you never miss a new video from my channel. Now before going into the detail of this IC you should be familiar with two main components. The first one is a comparator. As the name suggests it is used to compare two different values. So to design a comparator you will need an operational amplifier or in short op amp. So if I connect a constant voltage of for example 2 volts at the inverting terminal. So on the non inverting input I must have to supply greater than 2 volts to turn the output of the op amp on. Practically I can easily demonstrate this by using a LM358 op amp IC. I connected a constant voltage of 6 volt at the inverted input. So as you can see in the multimeter, when the voltage on the non-inverted input is greater than 6 volts, the output turns on. And that is basically our comparator. Now the second most important component is a flip-flop. A flip-flop is a combination of logic gates in such a way that it stores a data of one bit value. You can remember the flip-flop as a memory device. You can store a value by connecting a 1-bit data at the set pin of the flip-flop. The flip-flop will try everything to keep that state, no matter if you disconnect the input. Now we can erase the data or you can say reset the flip-flop by connecting the reset pin to the ground. Now at this stage you have all the great knowledge to inspect the inside of the any 555 timer IC. The pin number 1 and 8 are connected through 3 5 kilo ohm resistors in series with the VCC and the ground, which creates a voltage divider of 1 third of the supply voltage and 2 third of the supply voltage. Pin 2 is the trigger pin, which connects to the negative input of the first comparator, and the positive input is connected to the 1 third of the supply voltage, and the output of this comparator is connected to the set pin of the flip-flop. Pin 3 is the output pin, which is connected to the output of the flip-flop by using an inverter, because the output of the flip-flop is inverted. Pin number 4 is the reset pin, which I already told you that by connecting it to the ground, immediately resets the flip-flop. That is why in many circuits, it is usually connected to the VCC. The pin number 5 is the control voltage which is connected to the negative input of the second comparator but also to the voltage divider which now has the potential of 2 third of the supply voltage. So by connecting different voltages to the spin you can change the reference voltage of the voltage dividers. That is why in many circuits the spin is left loose. Pin 6 is the threshold pin which connects to the positive input of the second comparator whose output is connected to the reset pin of the flip-flop. Now the most important pin is the discharge pin, which connects to the collector of bipolar junction transistor or in short BJT. The emitter of this transistor is connected to the ground and the base of this transistor connects to the output of the flip-flop and that basically makes up our any 555 timer. Now to understand the working behavior of this IC a bit better, let's consider an example of monostable multivibrator operation from the datasheet. Initially the capacitor is discharged, so there is 0 volt potential at pin number 6 and 7. Pin 6 provides the ground potential to the positive input of the second comparator. Since the positive input is lower than the negative one, so the output stays off and nothing happens. So to make something happen, 
we need to connect the pin number 2 of the IC to the ground by the help of a push button. By doing so, the positive input of the first comparator has a higher voltage than the negative one, so its output turns on, which sets the flip-flop so its output turns off because it is inverted, which simultaneously turns on the output of the IC because there is another inverter but at the same time turn off the transistor. Now the pin number 7 is no longer connected to the ground so the capacitor can charge up through the resistor. But when the capacitor is charged up to the 2 third of the supply voltage, the positive input of the second comparator has higher potential than the negative one hence the output turns on. This resets the flip-flop and turns the output of the IC off and ultimately activate the transistor which immediately discharge the capacitor because the pin 7 is now connected to the ground and we are back at the starting point. Now you can play with the values of resistor and capacitor to generate different output timings according to this formula. This operation is used when you want to give some delay in the output. Now the second basic operation is known as bistable multivibrator. In this configuration, we utilize two push buttons, one to trigger the flip-flop and one to reset the flip-flop. This way, by applying ground potential to the pin number 2, the positive of the first comparator has higher voltage than the negative one, so it activates the flip-flop and turns the output of the IC. Now to turn off the output, we have to connect the reset pin to the ground which will turn off the flip-flop thus the output immediately. This kind of circuit creates two stable states, high and low, and it is used to turn the output on and off with separate push buttons. Now the third and last operation is the A-stable multivibrator which is in simple words an oscillator which can create a scare wave with a variable duty cycle and also adjustable frequency. In this operation, the capacitor charges up through the resistor R1 and R2 and discharges only through the resistor R2. By this way, the on time of the square wave depends on the resistor 1 and resistor 2 and the off time only depends on the value of R2. But sadly, this design cannot produce smooth PWM signal with a constant frequency. So to improve the circuit, we can remove those R1 and R2 resistors and add a potentiometer and also two diodes to direct the charging current only through R1 and discharge current direct to the pin number 7. Now this potentiometer is used to increase the charging or discharging time and thus create a beautiful looking PWM signal with a variable duty cycle. If you want to know more about this PWM signal, then I highly recommend you to watch my previous video on this subject. Other than that, if you enjoyed watching this video and learned something new, then don't forget to like, share, subscribe and always remember, a good engineer is always learning.